What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video we're going to be talking about an introduction to APIs and Postman. If you guys are brand new to the channel, if you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, or anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. That's all we talk about here on this channel. I finally got a haircut, man. I feel like a human being once again after like three months. So yeah, back in the game, you guys, and I'm um, really excited. I wanted to bring you guys some content. I wanted to talk about something that was uh, difficult for me during coding bootcamp, which was understanding APIs, what they were, and how to work with them so in this video i want to give you guys like a introductory but sort of intermediate introductory to apis and basically what they are so we're going to be working with two different apis and i also want to show you guys a tool called postman which is really important for software developers because you're going to use it a lot when you're working with different services and um yeah let's just get more into it so i was looking online i was trying to find a simple diagram that kind of concisely explains what apis are what they do but i figured it'd be better to just kind of make my own there's a lot of extra stuff like i said this is an introductory video on apis there's a lot more than what we're going to talk about here but this is basically the essential things that we need to understand about apis so over here we have our client which could be a computer it could be our phone it could be a tablet basically anything any device that connects to the internet and allows us to use the internet and to send requests across the web so whenever we send those requests in our browser whenever we type something in here um, a url an address we're making a request to a server now that server can be for many different services right so think of this as and i wanted to show you guys some examples of you know what type of services can this be so again, it could be Slack, Yelp, Facebook, Instagram, Google, YouTube, and there's a million and one other things that it could be, right? So essentially the API or the server is connected to the database of whichever service that you're using. So all these different services, YouTube has some data, right? Google has some data, Instagram has data. These could be like about our login information. It could be our profile picture. It could be our date of birth, uh, what we do for a living, our favorite restaurants. All these different things are stored in a database of these different services and the api where we make requests gives us access to the data from that service okay so the data is going to be sent back to our client which is what we see on the screen um, when we're using different applications and things like that so sometimes you'll be seeing data coming from different services and you will have no idea that it's coming from another service besides the website that you're on now down here i put some sticky notes for additional topics that you guys would definitely want to go build on after this video so http protocol rest apis endpoints client server model headers authorization and http status code so you'll be seeing some of this stuff as we get into postman and we start doing some actual interactions with apis but i just want to leave those sticky notes down there so that once you guys leave this video if you want to continue your research you kind of know different things that are going to be popping up common themes or apis all right guys so if you open another tab and you google postman the first result that's going to come up it'll look like this so postman is a tool that essentially allows you to do anything you could do in the front end of an application so postman is a tool that you download and essentially you can use it like your front end for your application so like anything you would fill out in a form or any request that you would make inside of an application you can all you can test it and, and work with it inside of postman without having to start your application every single time and like go into the browser and fill out forms different things like that you can just send requests and look at the responses and see how the data is formatted and all these different things inside of a free tool called postman so i highly recommend you guys come over here if you don't have it click on download and download postman uh, i'm using mac so obviously it gives me the mac download but you guys use um whichever download that you need to. This is a brand new account that I just made for this video. So when you guys first download and open Postman, it should look very similar, um, if not exactly just like this. And as you can see, we have a dashboard here with a lot of different options. So we're only gonna focus on the things that are like super important to us right now. So we can see that we can create a request. We can create a collection, which is just a folder that has a bunch of requests inside of it. So for example, um, if I wanted to work with one API and keep all my requests for that one API inside of a collection, I could do that and then separate them all out so that I can have it kind of organized. So we'll do some of that and show you guys some examples. We can create environments. So um, as you guys 
or I've probably heard from some of my videos in the past, you might have something like a QA environment, you might have a UAT or user acceptance testing environment, so uh, or a development environment. So you can have different environments where you have different variables for each environment and things like that. So it's very easy to create environments inside of Postman and manage your variables and things like that. And then you can even create an API and you can do a ton of more stuff. Um, you can even switch it to dark mode, which I'm actually gonna do because uh, I like working in dark mode like this, it looks better, um, a lot easier on the eyes. So now that we have Postman installed on our computer, we need to go find an API to actually work with before we can actually come over here and use Postman. So let's go back over to the web and I already have uh, some APIs picked out. So this is actually the very first API that I used in Coding Bootcamp that they used for a demo and I'm gonna use it here to give you an example of a really easy API to work with. So when you guys leave this video, you should be able to go you know, into your own application or your own text editor or your own Postman and you should be able to interact with this API as well. So this is a Chuck Norris quote API and basically it just has a bunch of Chuck Norris quotes that you can access um, at different endpoints. So we talk about this idea of endpoints, right? Um, we If we scroll down here to fetching a random joke, okay, we see this URL here and we see that this is going to be our endpoint, random. Okay, so this is going to be um, our URL and this is going to be the address that we need to send the request to to actually get the data. So what we can see here in the result is they're showing us in the documentation how the result is going to look when we get it back. So what you guys are seeing here is called JSON, a JSON object. So why don't we go ahead and go to Postman and actually try to get some of this data. Uh, so let's go to this very first one. Let's just look for a random joke first. So we just copy this URL and go back over to Postman that we just downloaded. So what we're going to do is let's go to collections and let's actually create a new collection and let's call this collection the Chuck Norris API and we'll create it. So you'll see that it created a new folder for us with zero requests in it. So now if we come over here uh, and click these three dots and we go to add request, we can add a request name. So we'll call this one random joke because that's what we're gonna be doing here. Save the Chuck Norris API. And now we have one request. So if we open this up now, we'll see that we have a get request and it's a random joke. So now, as you can see um, over here, it opens up a new window once we click on the request. And in this drop down, we have the different types of requests that we can make. So again, this goes back to those sticky notes I was showing you guys uh, with learning how to work with HTTP protocol. But essentially, there's different types of calls that we can make. So we can make a get request, a post request, a put request, a patch and delete. These are all other HTTP protocol methods, but these are the most common, these first uh, five right here. So we're gonna be making a get request because that's what the documentation tells us to make. And we're gonna make the request to that URL to get a random, uh, a random joke back. Now again, the get request tells the server that we wanted to send us some data back, okay? And then a post request, for example, would be us sending some data to the server for it to do something with. So in this case, we wanna receive back a random joke. So we're gonna go ahead and press in and see what happens. So as you guys can see, we have a status code of 200. And if we read right here, it says the status response for successful HTTP requests for 200. The actual response will depend on the request method used. And to get request, the response will contain an entity corresponding to the requested resource. So again, if you get a 200 guys, that's good. Um, in the case of HTTP codes, which is I think one of the notes I left on the mural board, but in these HTTP status codes, it basically is a number that will tell you if your request was successful and if it wasn't, then what went wrong with the request. So as you start making more calls and working with APIs, you'll start to see these requests more and more and you'll get more familiar with them and what they mean. But just know that 200 is always a good thing. Well, for the most part, it's always a good thing. Um, so we got a 200 and you can see that we got this JSON object back, right? We can see here it's JSON. Now we can see we have different formats here. So we can look at this in XML, which is a different data transfer uh, format. We can look at it in HTML 
and look at it in plain text. So um, JSON is the one that we're going to use the most in our applications. And basically, I know you guys might be thinking like, okay, Darian, so what are we going to do with this random joke now? Like, why, why is this important? Why does this matter? Well, what we could do is we could take this joke inside of our application. We could make this same request that we just made inside of Postman. Remember, Postman is like our front end, right? It's like the same thing we'd be doing inside of the application. So if we had a screen where we could see random jokes or we needed to do something with a joke from Chuck Norris, for whatever reason, our application needed these jokes, we could make this call in our application get this joke back and we could display this however we wanted wherever we wanted inside of our application so any of the data that we got back in this 200 response in this json object we can use any of this data inside of our own application so that is what really gives developers a lot of the creative freedom to work with a lot of other services and get information that's already out there instead of having to like reinvent the wheel to get data that already exists in the world and that allows us to bring all these different services and APIs together and allow them to communicate together to create some really cool technologies and applications. So that's why a lot of the applications we use today, they all are using APIs and they're integrating a lot of different services. But to us, it looks like one smooth application, one smooth you know process, but it's a lot of different services and things that are usually working together. So let's do one more. Let's go here. Let's go to add another request and let's go uh, random joke by ID and let's click that and let's make that um, let's make that same call but let's just go forward slash uh, I don't know let's try five and let's see if we can get a joke back a specific joke of five yep and we do so when we get so I guess this probably shouldn't be called random joke by ID um, it's called Should be called multiple random jokes and if we just pass a number here um, like we saw in the documentation we will get one two three four five so whatever number we pass here we'll get that many jokes back so if we go three and send the request again we get three jokes back okay so that is another example of just, you know, the different endpoints and how we can work with them and how different endpoints give us different data back. OK, now let's move on to a slightly more intermediate API that actually involves some authorization where we can't just access all the data without having to do, you know, any sort of authorization or say that we have access to this or we've been granted access to this, this data. So let's go back to our browser and Let's go to this one. This is called the WordNik API. And basically it's like a huge uh, resource for words. It's got like definitions from dictionaries. You can do um, synonyms, antonyms, um, all types of stuff, you know, origins. You can do all types of stuff with this API, right? So if we go to docs, we can look at some of the things that we can do with the API, right? So we can get word, we can get a list of words, um, let's see let's see individual words so we can get definitions examples frequencies phrases related words so all these different things we can grab if we look at words okay and for example here we have random words all right so this is the one that we're going to be interested in here so again here we go response 200 or status 200 so basically this is saying that if you get a positive request or a, a, a okay request that went through you sent all your data all your information over correctly to get a 200 response this is what your response should look like this is what the json will look like for the response if you get a 200 so that's how this documentation is helpful to us as developers it tells us exactly what we can expect when we do everything right so then down here we have some more documentation on parameters or different things that we can send as a part of our request to make our request more specific for the data that we get back and we see this button here called try it out so let's click that so here you can see that we have a request url so let's grab this random words okay we, we're not going to grab the whole thing because all these other things you guys can see they're using has has dictionary max corpus count and some other things so they're using all these extra parameters here 
to define their request, okay? We just want a random word, guys, so we only need this beginning part of the URL. All the rest of that is extra stuff that we don't need, okay? So now that we have our URL, let's go back to Postman and let's make another collection. So let's go new collection. And now this is going to be the word Nick. So let's create that. Now let's add a request. Oops. And let's call it a random word. Now let's open our request. It's going to also be a get request because we want to get some data back from the server. So let's send this over. Okay. And let's just go ahead and try to hit send and see if we can get a random word back. So as you guys notice, we got a 401 error now. Okay, so 401 means it's unauthorized. So similar to 403, which means forbidden, but specifically for use when authentication is possible, but has failed or has not yet been provided. So as you guys can see, these status codes give us a really quick snapshot of what's going on. So instead of trying to figure out why my request didn't work, I can look at the status code and figure out, okay, well, it's a 401, so something's going on with my authorization. Something's not right, right? So... You guys can also see this is the difference between a public API and also one that has some sort of authorization or a private API. So this is how you know companies and services protect their data, their information. They don't want people just randomly sending a bunch of requests to their, their servers and getting a bunch of random data and doing dangerous stuff with that. Imagine if people could just hit up our bank and get AP and send an API request to our bank and get banking information on us. That'd be really dangerous, right? So that's why we have these authorization methods and things like that. Okay, so now that we can see that we have these 401 codes, we have these 200 codes, and there's a bunch of other codes, 403, 500, and they tell us different things about our request, and we know this one's not working now because of authorization, now we gotta figure out what to do to fix that, right? So now if we go back over to our browser and we look at WordNick and we go to the documentation, we can see that over here, you need to sign up for a WordNick API key. Okay, so an API key is a secret credential basically that will allow you access to get the data. So with every request that you send to the server, you have to also send along that API key that lets the server know you have access to this information that you're requesting, that you're not just a random stranger, a random person from anywhere trying to request information like we were on the Chuck Norris API. So I already have signed up and gotten a API key from WordNick. Um, if you guys want to use this, you have to sign up and you might have to wait uh, quite a while, like maybe like a week or so to get your API key unless you do a donation or something. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just use my API key that I already have. So I'm going to copy it here and then I'm going to go back over to Postman. So what we want to do with this API key now is we want to add it as a query param. And just so that I don't get ahead of you guys, let me go back one more time and show you why we're going to put it there. So if we go back to docs and we go back to where we were, try it out. So if we look at this request URL where we need to send our request to get the information or the data back from WordNick. At the very end, we can see how they're sending their API key. They're sending it as API underscore key equals and then your API key, whatever they give us. OK, so now the trick is how do we get the API key into the URL like this for our request in Postman? So let's go back over. So what we're going to do is inside of the query params under params, you'll see query params. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly like what we saw in the documentation. So we're going to go API underscore key. And for the value, we're going to just pop in that API key they gave us. Make sure there's no extra spaces or anything like that. So now you can see that that API key has been added to the end of our request the same way it looks on the documentation. So we try to send the request now. Now we get a 200. And now we get a bunch of random words as our data back. So yeah, guys, I really hope you guys found this helpful. If you're brand new to coding or you're thinking about going to a coding bootcamp, make sure you check out the description box down below where I'm giving away my free intro to coding bootcamp course. It has everything in there I wish I would have known going into coding bootcamp. So make sure you guys go check that out. It's completely free. Also, if you guys are looking for a community of other developers who are learning how to code and being self-taught, check out the description box for a link to the private Facebook group. Where I put all the other free resources that I don't put in all the description boxes of these videos. 
And if this was helpful, guys, make sure you leave me some comments, like, share, subscribe. It really helps me stay motivated to put this content out for you guys. This is Darian with Darian the Dead, and I'll see you guys in the next video, all right? Peace.